you know what time it is. Friday morning media. Alright, let's go. My morning, just right here is a warning. It gets dangerous like a road gun. Baby, won't you throw it back? I'ma catch it. Knock it out the ball with my bag. Look at that, baby, looking like a model of perfection. Tuesday, no hurt, candy rain, no. But I really need love, no chill, so I'm real well
I'm standing at the crossroad, I don't know what to do My mind is what these haters trying to make me lose Ever since the money, see these demons at me And I can't seem to keep nobody real around me You know how the saying goes, it's lonely at the top I'm allergic to the bottom and that's why I can't stop I'll take on all you haters today Cause I'm not gonna let you be in my way See, there's one thing that y'all don't understand In the end, I'm gonna be the last man Dream Team, what's going on? What's going on? Hold on. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Hold on. How y'all been? Good morning. We ain't have a morning session in a long time. In a long, long time. We haven't had a morning session in a long, long, long time. So we're gonna have to do this this way. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a morning session in a long, 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 long time. But what's going on, y'all? How y'all feeling? These morning sessions be having me going. If you had me rejuvenated, shout out to everybody that's here this morning. Everybody ain't going to be here, you know, some people at work, but I have an off day, you know, sometimes you got to have an off day. And uh, What I realized is that in order to keep things going, you have to put in if you want something out. You know what I'm saying? And if you missed last night live, it's still up. Go look at it. It's giving a lot of information. But y'all see the title, The Setup of R. Kelly, The Savages Way. I'm going to release some never before seen stuff and y'all going to fall the hell out like, yo, this is beyond my imagination. But before I do that, I have to address, well, I don't have to, I don't have to, but you know, people want my attention. And what I'm going to continue to speak about is how they use Atmos to try to bury Angelo. And they tried to use Atmos platform, knowing that Atmos didn't know nothing about what was going on. That's not cool. And like I said, at the end of the day, I never met some of them people. Some of them I have. But Atmos is my brother. And I'm going to, we can go through whatever. But I'm not going to stand by and allow somebody to destroy him 
or watch him get destroyed all because people are trying to get gratification. Now, on the other hand, let's go here. I know some people be like, oh no, he wouldn't do it for you. That's them. That's him. I'm a different breed. I can't speak on another person's character, but I can say it's been a lot of times that he have hit me behind the scenes and told me like, yo, just stay clear of this. This was going on, this was going on. And I mean, and that's what brothers do. However, before I get started, I will I'll let you know that you're on the explicit page. You're gonna, you gonna you might hear some cuss words. You might see some things that you just might gotta say. Don't let the kids see. So I'm giving you fair warning. What this page is about. This is a vent, fuck everybody feelings, tell it how it really is. Why? Because we the people want to know. And I keep the we the people. I started that over here. Shout out to Trump. A lot of people don't like me when I say that. But guess what? He's better than Biden. And he's way better than Obama. I stand on that. But this is not about that right now. This live is personal for me. Because Robert is sitting behind bars for nothing. Some people might say, oh, look at what he done. Nah, I'm going to bring some stuff up to you today. So if you want to donate, you can hit the uh, cash app at dollar sign official Dana J. As you see it going through the sticker or, or the tick at the bottom. This page is not monetized. So also you got to realize that Dana J, official Dana J is a brand. It's a business. So, hey, every little bit helps, whether it's dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, and whatever you feel like you want to see. Only thing I say is nothing is mandatory. And you will never hear me go on an auction block. Oh, you gotta send ten dollars here, ten, 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 ten. You gotta send five dollars here, five, 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 five. You gotta send nine dollars and you will never hear that from me. You will always hear me say. This is optional. If you want to send something, thank you. I love it. If not, then hey. <sighs> Miss Lady T, man, you have to talk after this live. We got to talk after this live. Um, shout out to everybody that's here. Um. And no, you ain't do nothing this time. Shout out to everybody that's here. I thank y'all for joining. Let's get into this commentary. First things first. First things first. And with first things being first, we're going to talk about the false investigation. Uh oh. Dana, you serious? Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about the false investigation. The false investigation. Dottie put out a post that said, what happened to this investigation? First of all, you got to look at where it's coming from, Scandal Media. There, this was no investigation ever. This was something that was put together by Don Russell and Cash Jones. Tammy Washington is not a real person. That's an illusion of a person to create bull crap. You will never find the real Tammy Washington. Okay? So this was never an investigation. Prime example. Listen to what's going on. Uh, it says, Scandal Media is calling for U.S. Attorney William Barr to investigate federal prosecutors in an alleged scheme to use informants to fabricate evidence in R. Kelly case. Uh, you see William Barr, you see Alice Clary, you see R. Kelly, you see Tammy Washington. But then 
you see these players here, right? But then it says, by freelance reporter Tammy Washington. Make this make sense. Why would a freelance reporter put put their self there? You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Stop. People, you have to stop jumping on everything you see. Vet everything that you hear. Vet everything that comes your way. That's what I would say to you. Vet everything. Vet everything. Next thing we go into. Next thing we go into is this lie right here. For people not to like me, they surely follow me. And I get it. When you don't have nothing, you always got to go to who have it all. Now, this lady hates R. Kelly. So why does she want her friends to come to my page and screen record? Oh, because she think I'll be talking about her. Nano, nano. You are not important. Nano Nanu, you are not important. And let's go and see, and I can give you some stories real quick, but she said slander. I don't slander people. I speak facts. So you see what I said? I said, due to the nature of what I want to show today, Meet me on my other channel, please, at 10 a.m., which we all know I came on at 11. And then they have a link to this page that you're on now. Can somebody tell me where you see me talking about Kel's tears at? Can somebody tell me who gives a fuck about a Kel's tears? But I'll say this much. You keep playing with me. And I will destroy that whole Oak Hove brand for good. And won't care who I hit in a process. I am not in a planned mood today. This is Friday the 13th. I don't play with certain days. So Cal's tears get a life. But... I understand, because while you was on there talking about me yesterday, right? While you was up there talking about me yesterday, you had a person that claimed that they was for Robert Kelly in the beginning. Jump on your platform. Last night, and lie uh oh get him boy she jumped on your platform with ease and start questioning about angelo we all know this lady ran ran a two and well three year muck on me with lies we also know that she's the one that's behind recording Keith, Bobby, Doug Anton, and then twisting it and sending it to Keith to make it seem like it was me. However, I should have known better to underestimate my devices. Even though I was on a phone call or I was on a tablet, I shouldn't have had them in an open chat. I should have just deleted that chat or I should have exited out of that chat and then held the conversation. 
So I still take responsibility for not thinking that people that I once trusted was in it for their own gratification. Now, she jumps on the page and she want to make it seem like I'm lying. And she said, Jana, laughing, like how the hell I went from being a beautician to admin at a cancer center to principal to whatever else. Now, wait, you can't say that you wasn't a principal because you put that, you put that in your life story. I don't have access to that. You also put that in LinkedIn before you switched it. Why did you take it down for seven days and then put it back up? And you still got lies up there on your LinkedIn, but that's not my place to go in because I don't fuck with you. I don't check for you, but you check for me 24 seven. You also the one that's sitting up there talking about, we need to call Bonjean and tell Bonjean to tell Robert to stop talking. But in the beginning, you was the main one. Robert need to tell his story. But because Robert came out and say he know Levi, he been, y'all been knew he knew me. But, 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 but the minute he came out and say he know Levi, and because me and Levi, don't fuck with y'all. Now, all of a sudden, oh, Bon Jean need to shut Robert down. This ain't good. This, 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 this. Y'all was never Robert's supporters. So y'all threatening, saying y'all ain't going to support. Get the fuck on and support the grown little boy. Support the government like y'all been doing. This is a repeat cycle. Whenever y'all don't get y'all way, it's, oh, we got to try to shut it down. We got to try to sway people away. But guess what? Jennifer Bonjean ain't going. Ain't going. And then y'all want me to just do a live all about y'all. But guess what? My title say the setup of R. Kelly the Savage's way. You ain't worth my time either. I never seen a newborn mother allegedly have a baby once every two months. Then the baby don't look nothing like you. The baby look like your brother, all of your brother. Then the baby crying in the middle of the night and you want to sneak on YouTube to talk about people and you are ignoring the baby. I don't like when people ignore babies. And the first thing y'all say is, oh, he called CPS. I never called CPS on you. Never. <laughs> but if I did, I have it all. Now, you really want to go there? The next time I hear somebody say I call CPS, I will do that shit live. Do not put me in a place that I haven't been. One thing about me, I don't throw rocks and hide my hand. This is not about you. It's not about me. This is about Robert Sylvester Kelly. If that's not who you for, then step the fuck off and mind your motherfucking business. What you feel about me don't matter because what you eat don't make me shit. Now, let's move forward. For people that said the Savages was never trying to get a TV show, I beg to differ. Y'all see where this come from? John Jalen Savage official, Atlanta, Georgia. You see John Jalen here. You see Tim here. 
You see Zan right here, which is a filmmaker, and you see Lisa Van Allen right here. Now, what could they be talking about? What could they be talking about? None other than Robert Sylvester Kelly. Lisa Van Allen running with the same lie. I was 17 when he touched me. But in court, it came out that you were 18. Everything I've been telling y'all the whole time, you are a whole adult. Their daughter was grown. Their daughter was older than you. But I guess the making millions process has been halted. Let's read what it say. John Jalen Savage, official, much thanks to at BBC3 for being able to capture some unplanned footage in real timing in this short film. Hashtag let her go. Hashtag daughter. Hashtag family. Link in bio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let who go? Now you understand why Joy don't want nothing to do with them. Hashtag, let her go. That's what their, that's what their, uh, 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 that's what their documentary is called. Let her go. And I find it funny that I did a play about sex trafficking called Let Her Go. And now I'm seeing this, which made me get off of that play because I didn't like the association, even though it wasn't none, I didn't like it. So let's go here. Everybody's saying, why Dana so hard on the savages? Jonjolin, do you remember this? Somebody better warn Dana J, he next. We set in grand jury on Mason today. Threats not acceptable. Now, I didn't think about it until just now, but I should have pulled the police report. The police report clearly is not with James Mason, it's with Don Russell. Don Russell threatened them and they put it on James Mason. The same way they claiming that I threatened them but I have the receipts when Jonjolin said she was going to blow my head off because I stand for Robert Sylvester Kelly. Let's go here. 97 baby girl. 97 baby girl, we all know, was, was Cash Jones. She was fed the information and the pictures by Don Russell. Now watch this. This picture was after the Clarys broke off the deal with Don Russell to set Robert up. Let's keep it real. Don whole motive was to set Robert up. Angelo wanted to see Azriel, so he played along with it. That's why I said, ain't nobody hands clean. But let's read at R. Kelly from Lil Hashtag Azriel Clary to high school graduate. Today is your day, as congratulations. Now it's time to have the type of fun and life an 18 year old teenager should have. Stay with us in Florida. Hashtag my family. Hashtag I want my friend back. Hashtag R. Kelly. Stop. Cash put this out like the family did this. So who want their friend back? Was this a shot to Az or was this a shot to Angelo? Or was this a stab to R. Kelly? Let's continue down this 97 baby girl train, the preliminary train. Look at this. This is Alice Clary. But let's see what 97 Baby Girl had to say. At R. Kelly, this is my aunt, Alice. She is hashtag Azriel Clary mom. She's close to your age and, and I couldn't read the rest of that. So 
This is where the shit storm coming from. We all know Don got charged for threatening and doing other things to the accusers, but this is where Robert's pain is coming from. And when I said it, certain people wanted to take to their channel. Oh, no, this is going on. This is this. And book them this and book them that. No, no, no. Forget the distractions. Let's stay in the middle of the donut where the feeling is at. So this was the setup, but here, 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 here we go. Feast your eyes on this. R. Kelly said he fired some people. R. Kelly said, my God, they were some crooked ass people. That BOP officer ain't getting off the hook. You just wait. So let's go here. Cheryl Mack sent a picture of V. No, I'm sorry. Cheryl Mack talked to V and had V film R. Kelly while he was asleep. The only person that showed us that had this were the savages. Now, and I will say this, since Tia sent her crew over here, I know they ready to report. I know they ready to have this channel shut down and do this, but if, if they do it and YouTube goes with it, this is what I'm gonna do. Because I'm always, one step ahead of the bullshit. This is what I'm going to do. Before I go any further. If it's taken down. The link that I just posted follow that link. And I'm gonna post this link at the top of the chat box. All right. Let's go. You clearly see R. Kelly laying on the couch. This, these legs belong to V. To make it worse, they, they put out there and said V was a minor, right? Now, you clearly see this is not a minor's body. And when I told y'all, hey guys, we're glad when I told y'all, they lied, they lied. So if the so if R. Kelly was a monster, right? Why didn't you put clothes on, but you taking pictures of R. Kelly naked? And you got the camera where it can show that you're naked, directed at R. Kelly. Is this one of the pics that y'all claim that he made y'all do? Let's continue. You clearly see him sleep. But the first person that did it was who? Mom fight to save daughter. Jonjolin who? Savage. Why does she do that? to make it seem like Joy turned on Rob, to have Rob zap out on Joy and you go home and you do the, this was all a ploy for them. And they used V because V was on her way out. Now, unless I'm crazy, unless I'm ambidextrous, unless I'm whatever, 
You see V leg right here while Robert is asleep. If you go back and look at the complexion of V, V looks almost the same complexion as Joy. Joy is a little lighter. So if Rob is impulsive as they say he is, why didn't he zap out on Joy? Because Rob knew that Joy wouldn't do nothing like this. I'm just giving y'all points that the savages don't want y'all to see. You clearly see Rob sleep. You clearly see he don't have no pants or something on. So time out. Who's this right here? But I thought he had y'all locked up in a sex cult. I thought he had y'all as sex slaves. I thought he recorded everything y'all do. This is clearly wine right here. Let's go here. If you're going to record Robert Sleep, why cover up this person right here? And everybody know who, who this is. Pay attention to the feet structure. Pay attention to the body frame. Everybody was happy. Or were they? Because they couldn't be number one. Ask yourself this question. Why didn't V testify in Chicago? I can't remember if V testified in New York or not. So I'm just giving y'all facts, not fiction. I'm giving y'all something that y'all didn't even know about. But I ain't finished. We still got stuff to dissect. I ain't finished at all. Let's go here. 97 baby girl again. A lot of people was asking me, what was Vi talking about, Dana? Bring it back. Pay attention. 97 Baby Girl, August the 30th. This was 2019, I believe. Nope. 2018, 2017. Let's pay attention to the hashtags, though. Hashtag Michelle Obama. Hashtag Hillary Clinton. Hashtag woman again, woman against abuse. Hashtag woman right. Hashtag abuse. Hashtag abuse. Hashtag Ellen show. Hashtag Baltimore, Florida, Atlanta, VA. Hashtag woman standing up. Hashtag Sony records. Hashtag RCA records. Hashtag black, black and Spanish girl lives matter. Hashtag Dr. Phil show. Hashtag Oprah Winfrey. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Hashtag stop a monster. So if Cash was 97 baby girl, when you went to tell Robert they trying to set him up and he asked you who and you start stumbling and couldn't give him an answer. Have anybody else stopped and wonder why? She couldn't give an answer. Because you can't tell a man that he's being set up without you saying that I'm the one that set you up. I'm the one that took a big part in it. That's how I can tell you that you're being set up. How do you think that conversation would have turned out if she would have told Robert that? But because Robert already knew that she works with Don, he told her, go get me some more information. Go get me some more information. I put out a post yesterday. I said, do you know this lady? Do you know her role? 
Do you know what she's about? Nobody said anything. So I'm going to ask you this question. Do y'all know who this is? And this is why I say nobody should talk about people if you don't know who this is. So I need my people that's watching, put in the chat. If you know who this is, put who this is. If you don't know who it is, say, nah, tell me who it is. So I'm just saying, do anybody know who this is? Hey, Miss Belinda. Do anybody know who this is? G Joy in the house. What up, Judah? G Joy said, I don't know. V and V White said, Nope, who is it? I'm going to give three more people a chance to answer. Do anybody know who this is? Oh, we got time today. We got time today. That's when I want to go looking for stuff. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Ms. William. Um, I just want to know if y'all know who this is. Uh, who it be? Nobody know who it is. Hmm. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I ain't gonna lie to you. I am shocked. I am shocked that nobody knows who this is. Give me a second. I want y'all to study that. Because y'all know who it is. You just don't know who it is. <laughs> y'all know exactly who it is. Y'all just don't know who it is. And when y'all find out who it is, you're going to be like, wow, this is crazy. This is real crazy when y'all find out exactly who that is. Somebody says she looks sneaky. Somebody said uh, that looked like Drea. Keep going. This is why I have these lives so people can be up on point of what's going on. Keep keep going. They said it can be drill. Mm. Mm, no. Not drill. Somebody said it could be Sharon Wimbush. Nope. Not Sharon Wimbush. I just want to see if y'all know. Ah, here we go. I just want to see if y'all know who this is. Like I say, we, we going to dissect this today. And the others is going to be mad. So let's go there. Let's see. Let's see what y'all say. Uh, well, Sharon, no, that's none of those. This lady right here is Cheryl Mack. This is London on the tracks, mom. But wait, 
Cheryl Mack said, she's blessed. This is the day that she met with the feds. This is the picture she, she took after she met with the feds. And look who liked it. Jonjolin Savage and 106 others. Why? Because she's already in a participation in the takedown of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So Dana, what do you mean by when you say the takedown of Robert Sylvester Kelly? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Toy, I'm live. All right, all right, ugly. All right. So, what do you mean by the takedown of Robert Sylvester Kelly? I'm about to show you. Let's get into it, shall we? Shall we get into it? Let's do it. During my term with Robert Kelly, as friend and as employee, I witnessed sex, hostility, snatching, grabbing, groping, drugs, alcohol, and bipolar behavior, all from a man who could write a record better than he could spell his name. I began my journey with Robert professionally in August 2005. Prior to that, there was just cordial conversations. My first visit to Robert's studio was in 2005. My first artist, Shari Huck, who now travels as background vocalist for Tamiya. Robert invited Shari and I to his chocolate factory studio, located in the basement of his Olympia Fields, Illinois home, foreclosed in 2013. We arrived there with the intent to play music and get direction. But we ended up there for days in the studio with Robert at his request, watching him create. There were numerous girls, pause. There were numerous girls of all ages in and out of the studio at all times. Okay, so there's numerous girls of all ages in and out at the studio at all times. Pay attention. Some waited for hours and some came right in and were introduced and would ultimately disappear. There were many. All of them were very, very young. Stop. You saying, hold on, hold on. This is why I don't like Apple. You saying, see, you saying there were many, all of them were very, very young. But just before that, you said there were numerous girls of all ages in and out of the studio at all times. So which lie are you going to run with, Cheryl Mack? Either it was all, it was numerous of girls of all ages in and out the studio of all times, or they were many girls that were very, very young. You can't have it both ways. And this is why I said what I said. I broke the outline and sent it to Canick. If he would have followed the outline, Robert wouldn't have got convicted in New York. Or should I say it would have been extremely hard to convict him in New York if Canick would have followed the outline that I emailed him. But let's continue. Shari in her early 30s at the time didn't seem of interest to Robert. But he loved her voice and said he was very impressed with me as her manager and wanted to give her a shot at recording records for other projects. She recorded several records and one of which he actually selected for his album Double Up. The album did very well. We saw credits, but there was zero dollar compensation. Shari was featured on the album singing a duet alongside Robert titled Having a Baby. Stop. 
Do y'all see the problem so far? The problems so far are inconsistencies in the storytelling. The second problem is you don't know the demographic of the ages. The third problem, and I'm and I'm adding this, is money. Money. So if Robert would have gave y'all some money, you wouldn't have wrote this lie of a memoir, would you, Cheryl Mack? So you said Robert never possessed any further activity with Shari after that and said he wasn't going to make the song a single. So Shari lost interest and moved on with other supporting act opportunities with Brandy, Kelly Price, and ultimately made her home with Tamia. Shari and I parted ways. Uh-oh. And I continued working and I continue my working relationship with Robert. Let's stop. If Robert burnt you out of money, if Robert burnt your client out of money, why would you continue a working relationship with Robert? Which lead me to believe that you lied about this. Which lead me to believe that as a manager, Robert paid you and you didn't pay your artists. So what other way to smear Robert and to not have it going back and forth? Well, just to say Robert didn't pay you when he gave it to you and you were supposed to have paid your artist because that's how it worked. If you have a manager, your manager gets paid, then he take his off the top and then he give the rest to you. Hmm. Let's go there, because a lot of people don't. So since you and Shari parted ways, I would like to know why. So then you said, during the early visits with Robert, I was introduced to his staff of engineers and I became a staple piece. He referred to me as his sister. This is why I say, do not give people titles that haven't been through nothing with you. Because that sister thing is a bond of closeness, closeliness. She said, I met Robert's kids on the first visit to his home. He seemed very close to the children. And this was during the alleged porn court case period. There was a very close relationship with Joanne, his oldest daughter, who was now 16 at the time. Joanne was around more than Jaya and Robert Jr. She was a dancer and always danced at Robert's request for his guests. It was uncomfortable. Uh-oh. There was one night, one late night party, and Robert had her dancing on the pool table for his guests. Oh, wait a minute. That's one lie. Because didn't Lizette say that Robert had her dancing on a pool table one late night party? But we got Cheryl Mack coming out saying that Robert had his daughter dancing on a pool table. I told y'all, all the narratives come from here. And Ro here you go on, for his guests. There were older men present, mostly staff. This was awkward. He cheered her on, and it seemed as if the guys were afraid to clap or even look at her. She was young, and it was inappropriate. Okay, if that was the case, why didn't you end your job employment right then and there? If it was inappropriate, if she was young, it ain't shit you can tell me. I'm getting up out. Have a nice day. Let's make it make sense. 
Then she said, Robert made sure that everyone knew my name, Jeff the engineer, Abel Gibraldi, the in-house engineer, Ian Moranis, also the house engineer, Donnie Lau, music producer, ran to the studio. I mean, ran the studio. Now watch. Every last one of them names got called in in New York or Chicago. How is it that she put out a memoir and all the names get called from the memoir? But we didn't see no Sherry. Why did why why wasn't Sherry called? Let's make this make sense. And we're gonna take our time and break this down. The studio was open around the clock and Robert recorded after midnight and into the mornings every day. His days began around 4 p.m. with him making set, make, making rounds with his guests and ultimately ending in the studio. I was always invited to every event, costume parties, dinners, house parties, and themes. I mean, with themes, five-star parties as they were called. So wait, if you were there, right? For every party. That means you can attest to the fact that IDs was looked at when Geronda was there. So how is it that Cannon didn't call you as a witness <laughs> for the defense? After all, you was there. She also said, I was there for video shoots and actually appeared in videos. <coughs> this was never a paid opportunity with, with Robert. Here we go again. This was never a paid opportunity with Robert. Our agreement was that if I found an artist's opportunity, I would bring it to him first. During that time, I never felt fear of Robert. It was a simple understanding. Stop. Put that in your memory brain, in your memory bank. Everything you do with your friend or your brother, why do you got to get paid for it? If me and Miss Jennifer Bond Jean were brothers and sisters and she gave a party and I'm there and I just so happen to do security for her party. I'm not going to ask her to pay me. Why? That's my sister. I'm not trying to milk her pockets. So everything we hear, it's about money with Robert. And then she said she never felt fear of Robert. It was a simple understanding. Keep that in your memory bank. She said, I worked a corporate job by day and traveled to Chicago on weekends. I traveled at my own expense and did so for several years. I introduced Robert to an artist that I began working with in Atlanta. I'm mean, out of Atlanta, Don. Stop. If he screwed your first artist, why are you inviting another artist to see him? Or should I say it this way? If he screwed your first artist over, why are you bringing another artist to see him? Make it make sense. Then you said, I was shopping her project and, and getting interest when I played her and getting interest interest when I played her music for Robert. Robert requested pictures and video of Don. When I showed that to him, after loving her voice, he invited her out at his expense. Uh-oh, here's a conflict. If you pay for your trips, Cheryl Mack, from Atlanta to Chicago, why? He never meet this girl, Don. He just like her voice. And he paid for her flight. You saying 
you paid for your own flight. Well, he paid for Jonjolin and Joy flight. How is it that he paid for everybody else's flight except for you? No, your memoir got to sound juicy. And your memoir got to be rushed so people can just keep reading and hoping and you hoping that people overlook certain things that you put in there. Not me. So after Robert requested pictures and video of Don, and after you showed him the video and pictures, he loving her voice, he paid for her to come out there. You said Don was early, was in her early 20s at the time. When I flew her out, when I flew her out, stop. I thought you said Robert invited her out at his expense. But then you turn around, not even a whole paragraph later, a sentence later, and say, when I flew her out, she brought a girlfriend with her, Angie. And not Angie Walker, neither. So I'm lost. If he flew her out at his expense, when did you fly her out for her to bring her girlfriend? Make this make sense. Then you said Robert met Dawn, loved her, and invited her repeatedly. Then without me, uh-oh. Ultimately, after a few more visits for parties and no studio time ever, Don stopped visiting Robert. Or did Don stop visiting Robert because he seen the jealousy in you? Or she seen the jealousy in you? However, that story it's Geronda's story, ain't it? Oh, I needed some shoes, so I just left and jumped the gate. Now, that's two artists that Robert supposed to have screwed over, right? Watch this. This all went on for a while. In 2009, I began working with a female artist, Precious Way. Precious was 17 originally from Chicago and living in Atlanta at the time. Precious was very excited about me as her manager. And when I told her and her mother that I had a great relationship with Robert, uh-oh, here we go. Why are you taking these people to Robert if Robert is screwing everybody that you know over? I'm not understanding this. If Robert is screwing everybody that you know over, why are you continuously taking your ax to Robert? I want to know. So you said they both wanted to meet him and showcase precious music. That was an easy task. I called Robert and told him about Precious, and he invited her and her mom out to Olympia Fields. I covered I covered the cost of air and hotel for all of us. When we arrived in Chicago, we were invited to the home where there was a get together. There was a basketball game on a court at his home, and the bar was open on the lawn. Precious and her mom, who are both Chicago fans, of Roberts that never even came close to meeting him. It was beyond their wildest dreams. Robert was very cordial. Hold on. Robert, hold on. Robert was very cordial and, Jesus. Robert was very cordial and respectful that night. We were as his special guests. He seemed smitten with Precious. She was young, and this hadn't happened at this point in my presence during my stint with Robert. Stop. But didn't you say that he started seeing your other artists without you? 
Didn't you say he didn't really want to work with Sherry after doing the song with her? These are your words, Cheryl Mack, not nobody else's. Then she said, we were invited into his studio and there we sat, listened to music and shuffled through pictures from Precious Portfolio. Precious acts and with Robert's approval, went to the bathroom down the hall while her mother and I waited in the studio. During their absence, Robert faked the phone call, went to the bathroom and escorted Precious into his theater room next door to the bathroom. Huh? Once he had Precious in the theater room, he locked the door and begin to se- and begin his sex act with her. Wait, didn't didn't we hear that before? Wasn't that the story of Sonia? Or was that the combined story of Sonia and the girl uh 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 for that met him at the little uh event in Chicago and for sisters only? I'm just saying. Cheryl Mack said she was a virgin, scared out of her mind that if she didn't allow him to have sex with her, that he would refuse her project and disappoint me in the end. In that room, they exchanged phone numbers. And when she returned to the room, she seemed nervous and disingenuous, nervous and disengaged. He appeared a few minutes later. We resumed as if the sex trauma never happened. Her mother and I were totally in the dark of this happening. Precious and Robert became very close. Wait a minute. If she seemed nervous and disengaged, that means she was violated, right? So how did they become very close? That's not making sense. Because a person that's raped that's nervous and disengaged, is not going to become close when they have a way out of a situation. Okay, from the girl who mom was a nurse. Right. Chicago trial. Thank, thank you, Nikki. He appeared a few minutes later. We resumed as if the sex net trauma never happened. Her mother and I were totally in the dark of this happening. Precious and Robert became very close. They would talk for hours on the phone, and her mother and I were clueless. Wait, so how you know they talked on the phone for for hours if you and her mom were clueless? He told her not to tell me that they were talking offline. She was so afraid of Robert. This went on for months. Robert ultimately agreed to make this a chocolate factory project, and he allowed me to oversee the project. Precious took a firm liking to Robert. Robert will ultimately put Precious up in a hotel a little less than a mile from his home at the Country Inn Suites in Madison, Illinois. He would extend the room daily to keep her there. Hold on. Wait. Didn't we hear that story in before too? I'm telling you, all of the stories come from this memoir. All of the acts come from out of uh, Demetrius Smith. All of the in-between come from the book that Cash got. Let's make it make sense. And let's get them likes up, y'all. Excuse me. Robert requested a writer for Precious to get her music going. He allowed me as her manager to oversee the project. I hired engineers and songwriters for the project. There were times when he would yell at Precious about what she would wear to the studio, and she would cry out of fear. She said that he would beat her at the end of the sessions. He would buy her costumes and make her dress up and videotape her. She was forced to wear high heels and tutus with hair bows and lollipops to complete the costume. Stop. 
Don't that feed into the narrative that old Slove put out there that, oh, he wanted the girls to look younger. I'm trying to tell you everything you need to know about the trial is right here. Also, right, Geronda. But you see where it come from, Cheryl Mack. Let's make it make sense. She said, I scouted a writer from Atlanta in January of 2010. Her name was Vonica Andrews. Vonica was an inspiring writer. She was in love with Robert. Oh my God. The first day that she met him, he wanted to meet with her without me. He said he wanted to do so because he needed to make sure she was in it for precious. This was also part of his scheme. He met her alone, and after the first night, he called me and said, you the shit. She was 19 at the time. Robert began playing Precious and Vonica against each other until it got to be too much for Precious. Stop. Ain't that's what you heard from uh, Richard Allline, a.k.a. A.R. Rich? That Robert played people against each other? Also, ain't that what you heard from Don Russell? Make it make sense. <laughs> he met with her alone, and after the first night, he called me and said, you the shit. She was 19 at the time. Robert began playing Precious and Vonica against each other until it got to be too much for Precious. Robert had me overseeing the project and proposed a co-management agreement for both the girls. Wait, if both of them are over 17 and 18, they both were 19, why, why are they being introduced as girls? It's not what the truth is, it's what the wording is. I keep telling you that. He had me doing all the work. And he would come in at the end of every session to check the progress of the of the Vonica's writing and precious vocals. I hired an engineer by the name Dwayne. He was also a producer and he was present for every session with the girls. Precious was very afraid of Robert. Wait a minute. How was Precious afraid of Robert when they, be, when they became close? Per your voice, Cheryl Mack. Don't make sense there. She would almost tear up when she knew that he was on the way to the session. I began to fear what she feared. This went on for quite some time, and Robert ultimately stopped her sessions. But I thought you said Robert was never a threat. Right. Right, Prima. But I thought Robert was never a threat. I thought Robert was never a threat. That's what you said. By now, she was in Hampton, in a Hampton Inn hotel in Madison, Illinois. I was flying in and out of Chicago. The sporadic sessions didn't suit me from a cost perspective. There was no money coming in. He wouldn't allow her to work out, leave her room, or even speak or see her mother. It, it got really out of control. Where did we see this before? He won't allow me to leave the room. I got to knock on the walls to go to the bathroom. He won't even allow me to speak to his mother. I mean, he wouldn't even allow her to speak to her mother, but everybody had cell phones. Make this make sense. Make this make sense. 
And I got eight minutes. I got eight minutes to break this down. Can I do it? I don't think I can do the whole thing. So watch this. Precious carved me and Jones salary as a business management team salary. Thus, the 10K. Uh-oh. The salary was not in place until July 2014 and up until that time. I was basically working for free, hiring and building the company RSK. Robert received $2 million from a tour booked by Divine and never offered Divine or myself a dime. Uh Uh-oh. I have the bank statement of income and cash and outgoing expenses. When things started to become more structured, Robert began to change his attitude towards Divine and I. He began playing us against each other. Here we go with that again. He would call me and yell at me over the phone and in person for having conversations with Divine or even being cordial with him. He wanted me to believe that Divine was trying to be the artist and that he wasn't really in it for him. Things got out of control. I went through the process of hiring a stylist. The first stylist that I brought in for an interview, he wanted her phone number and wanted to hire the second candidate for work. During this time, he was proposed, he was proposed at nights with my 22-year-old niece. Wait, but I thought he was a pedophile. So if he was so if he was proposing, proposing, if he was proposing nights with your 22-year-old niece and your best friend, which is in her 30s, how is he only liking underage children? That part right there, Prima, how you working for free and got debit cards? Got credit cards. Who paid him? He was a he was very aggressive with my niece. Asked me to have her send pictures to his phone and call him. Come by the studio ETC. She refused to do so. My best friend had zero interest and though that and and thought that it was very disrespectful. Robert began asking me to invite girls to the gym where he played basketball. My friends never wanted to come. They actually thought, they actually thought he was disgusting and were intimidated with his aggressive behavior off the court. The stylist ultimately hired for the job, Cash Howard, was harassed by Robert. She said on numerous occasions, that he asked her for pictures and to not be afraid to be a little girl for daddy. Wait, where did we hear that at? Didn't Asriel say that say that about Robert? Hell, ain't that's what everybody said about Robert? So now Robert just asking the stylist for pictures. Mm. and telling him and calling him daddy. Then she said every girl called called or calls him daddy. It was embarrassing. I hired her and it became a styling game of weed smoking and heavy use of alcohol. And then ultimately he began to play us against each other. Here we go with that again. I never saw Cash and Robert intimate. I saw text messages and she often spoke of their sexual phone conversations. She told me that he forced her to watch him have sex with his regular girls, Juice and V. This went on a few times in the lounge at Divine's house. So wait, the story was Divine was supposed to be messing with R. Kelly. Make it make sense. I got four minutes. Let's go. 
this last piece. Robert's employee, Uncle Junebug, was very rude to me after he saw Robert yell and curse me out. Robert would say, you're very, you're very smart, but you do stupid stuff. For example, if the guests would fly in at noon and arrive at their hotel and couldn't check in until 3 p.m., he would yell and curse at me and call me stupid and blame me for the hotel rules. This would happen if flights were delayed, if drivers weren't present at the carousel, if the Uber driver was a male and not a female. He would yell at me and curse me out in front of Junebug. And Junebug ultimately began to yell and curse at me as Robert did. They would have me running through crowds at shows to make sure at the show once and curse me, hold on, wait a minute. They would have me running through crowds at the shows to make sure that the guests were always in his view at concerts and not near each other. He left the stage at a show once and cursed me out because one of the guests moved from one side to the other, moved from one side of the stage to the other. And he saw them close to each other. He said, it was my fault. He did this in front of the staff. Junebug had me scared to do my job. He would make me feel as though I didn't work for Mr. Kelly, as he would call him, more so that I worked for him. Robert would make Junebug the boss of everyone and still say, only do, only do what I tell you to do. It was a very confusing, hostile environment. More girls became priority. Uh-oh, Azriel Clary, an inspiring artist from Orlando. Joycelyn Savage, an inspiring artist from Atlanta. Judea Johnson, an inspiring model from Atlanta. Christy K. L. Lee, an inspiring artist from Texas. And others were all Robert's new teenage girls that I was certainly I meant that I was constantly moving around booking air, ground, and hotel fare with a debit card in my name from his personal Robert S. Kelly SunTrust bank account. Stop. Excuse me. How was they all his underage girlfriends or teenage girlfriends? Well, you can say that because... Joycelyn was 19. Then he said, these girls were so young and not travel savvy. It was very difficult creatively moving them around. Robert never cared about the process or the cost. He wanted to make sure that they got to him as he would request. So basically, you ain't care about breaking the law. But then on the flip side, there was no laws to be broken. On that note, I'll see y'all at 3.30. We're going to pick this up, and we're going to finish it out. All right? Y'all be blessed. Y'all be blessed. Once again, y'all be blessed. And I'm going to leave y'all with this. I thank y'all for joining me. i see you back at 3.30. All right? Peace.
Money Media, right, let's go. Knock it out the park with my bag, what can I do? Baby looking like a model of perfection Taste in a hurt, candy rain, no like to waste time on stupid conversation there's no profit in that so if i'm around people that are always complaining with no solutions then i'm wasting real estate in my brain for what i need to project and what i project in my brain is what i project in my reality so that real estate only has to be for evolution things that are going to help me get where i got to go you understand help me evolve so if my conversation with you makes me stagnate we don't have too much conversation either i don't have no time for no stupid ass conversation i don't like to waste time on stupid conversation there's no profit in that Tell me what you want Tell me what you need Tell me if it ain't good enough for you, baby Tell me, tell me what you want Tell me what you need Tell me if it ain't good enough for you, baby Swimming in you Said I wanna take a dip in your pool. Just go on a little dive, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 